Salutations, cadets. I am your Commander Pika. So you've been playing the game for a while and you want to finally try your hand at some raids and dungeons, but you don't know what you should bring and you don't want to mess up. Take a breath, it's going to be fine. If you wanted to see a full comprehensive list of what free-to-play weapons you can get, click the link above. For this video, I'm going to give you a simplified list of 21 legendary weapons that can help you be successful in any raid. With those weapons, try your hand at the free-to-play raids Vaults of Glass and King's Fall, just to get your feet wet and tell me how they went in the comments. Before the list, let's go over two quick tips to help you get started. Loadout options and loadout diversity. Loadout options refers to what you have available to bring to any activity. The number one tip I give to new players is to have a wide variety of weapon archetypes to choose from. It's about quantity, not quality, when first starting out. People might tell you need a god roll or what you have is trash, but a trash sniper rifle is better than having no sniper at all. You can have the godliest roll SMG and shotgun, but if it's a ranged boss fight and that's all you have, then that'll do you no good. So make sure to have a kinetic and energy option of every weapon type in your vault. A kinetic and arcane cannon, a kinetic and void sniper, etc. And if the content is in high power level required, like Prophecy or Vog, then pull a blue from collections to use, just so you have weapon coverage when starting out. The other tip is loadout diversity. At a macro level, what are your weapon choices and builds accomplishing, and do they suit the encounter and activity? What I often see are players using double primaries, meaning having a kinetic and energy weapon that both have infinite primary ammo. An example of this is using Boudicca C and BXR55 Battler. Those choices cover most engagement distances, but they lack the kill power for higher health targets. So try to always have one primary and one special weapon. Double primary should only be used if you have very limited options, doing specific endgame content or builds that might limit your weapon choice. Similarly, try to avoid running double special weapons, since that will lead you to an ammo problem. So it's not advised when first starting out and learning. Now for the 21 legendary weapons. These aren't the best options for each type of weapon, but they are all straightforward to obtain and fulfill their role well. Last tip, for easier build crafting and simpler weapon selection, I recommend having your special weapon be in your kinetic slot and all primaries in the energy slot. The reason, if you're battling enemies with elemental shields, or using a build that requires lots of kills with specific element weapons, to either make orbs of power, get charged with light, create elemental wells, etc. And you want them in your energy slot so you have more uptime on those effects. That's why for this list, my special recommendations are all in the kinetic slot, but at the end will be honorable mentions and other weapons worth chasing to further flesh out your arsenal. In the kinetic slot, Ragnil D is a high damage shotgun with simple means of obtaining. By progressing the reshaping the Enigma quest, you can craft your own god roll of this. Choosing auto loading and one-two punch or frenzy would be great perks to start with. Riptide is an excellent and versatile fusion rifle. A notable perk is Chill Clip, so you can freeze your targets in place and shatter them for extra damage. Its large perk pool leads to further personal customization, field prep purple for DPS, or maybe demolitionist for grenade builds. Part on our desk gives you a great AoE damage or blinding tool, try to hunt for a blinding grenades one with maybe the demolitionist or pugilist perk. Lastly, long shadow, really your only option but not bad for distance fighting. Pair it with perks like field prep and triple tap for higher ammo efficiency. For the energy slot primary weapons. Drang Baroque, giving you access to one of the best feeling, longest reaching sidearms that pairs well with Solar 3.0 by using the Incandescent perk for more Scorch on the field. Callus Mini Tool with Incandescent to spread Scorch around and ignite the battlefield. Funnel Web to never stop shooting, and pair it with the Echo of Instability Fragment to give it volatile rounds to explode your foes. And Out of Bounds to boost the uptime of your abilities, or raw lethality of the gun with Demolitionist, Adrenaline Junkie, Golden Tricorn, and Swashbuckler. Amit AR2 is a stable, craftable, and highly customizable auto to fit well into the Solar 3.0 ability builds and the endgame. Cantata 57 gives you a simple hand cannon with good stats that can help you fight at longer ranges with Time Payload, Range Finder, and Focus Fury. The well-regarded BXR55 Battler allows you to hit fire for CQC fights or ADS to fight past 40 meters, with a slew of rolls to help ability regen or raw weapon damage. Strident Whistle gives you a high damage bow, with perks like Incandescent, Explosive Head, Killing Wind, and Archer's Tempo. And the Staccato 46 gives you a stable, precision weapon to fight any enemy at range. For power weapons, Falling Guillotine to spin to win on a boss or last long in a fight with Relentless Strike, Whirlwind Blade. Or the Dares of Eternity Swords Half Truths and the other half to lunge to, or away from, your enemies, saving your bacon and jumping areas. Typhon GL5 gives you access to another Chill Clip weapon, or invest in ability regen and damage with Demolitionist and Explosive Light. For Rockets, Palmyra B should be on top of your list to craft when you progress the crafting tutorial quest. A solid tracking rocket with great utility and damage perks like Auto Loading and Explosive Light. If you want to maximize rocket damage, Heretic has you covered with Field Prep and Lasting Impression. 
With the focus on ad clear, the machine gun recurrent impact static roll of headstone with the origin trait land tank will help freeze your targets, explode, and keep you alive in battle. And lastly, Taipan 4FR, one of the best linear fusion rifles in the game you can easily craft and obtain, ready to melt bosses with triple tap and firing line. Those are your 21 weapons to cover any encounter. Long distance encounter with a boss fight, Long Shadow, BXR, Taipan 4FR. How about mid-range, run and gun, ad clear? Riptide, funnel web, recurrent impact. Mix and match to fit this situation. However, that's not all the weapons, and maybe you desire more. To further round out your arsenal, try your hand at the Ikelos and Seraph weapons from Dares of Eternity. They aren't the most meta weapons, but they give you access to some ability regen perks and war mine cells, which at base for all players can be detonated to help clear some adds. Otherwise, use your Umbral Engrams to unlock the Energy Sniper's Galu RR3 and Fugue 55 to give you quicker options. Make sure you have your trusty Nightwatch from the New Light campaign. If you don't, shame on you. Why would you get rid of the best gun? You can reacquire it by doing the A Guardian Rises quest from the Quest Archive kiosk in the tower. And then if you have a spare exotic cipher, make your way to the Monument to Lost Lights kiosk and consider Salvage your Salvo, Point of the Stag, or Null Composure. With all those weapons to go hunt, here's how to divide your time. Play Dares of Eternity, use your Paraversal Halls and Strange Coins when it's in Loot Rotation 2 and 3 for Long Shadow, Falling Guillotine, and Iclos Seraph weapons. Wait for Altars of Sorrow to be giving Heretic, Decrypt or Focus all your Umbral Ingrams, progress the crafting tutorial quests, reobtain Nightwatch, and then play some Crucible and Strikes in your downtime, or when they have double rank points to quickly get packages and reset their rank for double triple perk weapons. Always something you can go chase. And for your troubles, how about some exotic options to help you out? For weapons, be on the lookout for Arbalist to drop. It might be an easier and better pseudo sniper if your luck is bad at acquiring Long Shadow. Forerunner also fits a similar niche, giving you a sniper hang cannon hybrid from doing a Dares of Eternity quest. Otherwise, Huckleberry for ad clear, Risk Runner for extra damage resist against arc enemies, Skyburner's Oath to play at range and spread scorch, Hardlight to match enemy shields and elemental builds. Sunshot if you like hand cans that go big boom, and Sleeper Simulant if you want a high damage linear fusion that is more forgiving than Taipan having an increased body shot damage. For easy exotic armor choices to help out, focus on picks that keep you alive and are more low effort picks, things that give you a decent benefit without jumping through many hoops. For Titans, a Saint-14 Ward of Dawn is never frowned upon, ACD-0 Feedback Fence to survive melee enemies, Crest of Alpha Loopy to heal yourself and teammates, Hellfire Heart and Armamentarium to have higher uptime on your abilities, and Lion Rampant to floof like a warlock through those many jumping puzzles. For Hunters, a Celestial Nighthawk Marksman Golden Gun shouldn't be frowned upon. Safe, consistent, instant ranged damage. Warm Husk Crown to heal yourself out of a sticky situation, Graviton Forefront to forever hide from danger, Shinobu's Vow to throw constant seeking jolting skip grenades, Raiden Flux to clear your way through a dense field of adds, Orpheus Rig for more damage on Mobius Quiver or quickly regen your deadfall tether, and Stompies to jump 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 through platform areas. And Warlocks, the stag is great for having constant healing rifts that protect you and your team. Crown of Tempest, Nezrak's Sin, and Verity's Brow to throw constant abilities at your foes. Kronstein to melee your way safely through a fight being healed all the time. Starfire Protocol for two grenades to heal yourself or hurt your foes with. And Luna Faction Boots to help support your team in a DPS phase by boosting weapon range and reload speed. Hopefully this quick guide enlightened and encouraged you to go grab some weapons and go try out some raids and dungeons. If you have some other questions or recommendations, feel free to leave them down below. If you want to learn any raid or dungeon, or just want to meet and play with some chill people in Destiny 2, come join our clan in Discord, Sundog Gaming. Always happy to help, and pew pew. As always, I am your Commander Pika, be kind, have fun, and I'll see you on the battlefield.